Hello, and welcome back to the inside of my car. I didn't expect to be here. Also, happy Monday. It is day 20 of this readathon. I have not updated you since Thursday, I think. So it's been a few days, but that was because I was doing the reading rush readathon. So I took a little break from this one to smash out four books for that one, and that was a ride. But yeah, it's the 20th of April, and today I'm heading back to work. It'll be a closed store front to start off with. We're doing some stuff behind the scenes and I'm kind of excited. I mean, I was the ultimate sloth at home and uh, I got into that rhythm way too easy. But on my drive to work this morning, I was sort of, I was sort of feeling it. So that's what I will be doing today. I also brought my book with me, which I will hopefully be starting today. And that is The Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware. This will be my first thriller, actual thriller that I've read in a long time. It's not a genre that I gravitate towards, which is why it fits the prompt so well. But yeah, welcome back to the second half of the Owls Readathon. Happy to be here. Also, this is a weird comparison to the start of my part one vlog for this readathon where I had been told that work was stopping for a little bit and I was just feeling everything at that point in time which you saw if you've watched that one I'll leave it linked up above anyway but yeah I'm having a full circle kind of moment I'm a little bit apprehensive to see what the shops look like as well I wonder how many stores are sort of closed or are people reopening I have no idea I haven't been to like a shopping center since my last day of work, which was at the start of the month. Okay, I guess we should just go out and do it. Happy Monday. Hello and welcome back. I got home from work about 15 minutes ago and Evie is already being a sooky sooky girl and just wants cuddles with her mum, which is fine because I missed her so much today. Like it's insane how much more attached to her I got with just being at home with her every day. So, as for reading and reading goals, I have actually completed my chosen career, which was Trader of Magical Tomes. I finished all four books for that. Maybe I'll just put you over here. So, I did finish all four books to do with that career, so I have accomplished that. Uh, I don't know, like, I'm, I'm very proud of myself because I've never done this readathon before, and halfway through the month, I got the career that I wanted. But to keep the reading going, because I've been very successful in my reading goals this month, I decided to continue with some of the add-on careers and extras that G included this year. Which brings me to this one, which I mentioned that I was going to start today. This is to tick off the hmm, magical shop management. And I got up to page 22 on my break. So not very far into it, but is the whole thing told through, like, letter format? So far, the first, like, 20-odd pages of this have been this woman writing to someone because she's in jail for allegedly committing a crime, which she says she didn't commit. So I'm liking that element, but I don't usually gravitate towards books which tell the entire thing in a letter format like that. But I guess I'll see. I guess I'll see what happens. I just have to keep on reading it. But so far, so good. There is one other course that I also want to achieve during the hours, and that is the locomotive train course. For this one, I need to complete the subjects of Defense Against the Dark Arts and Muggle Studies. So for Defense Against the Dark Arts, the prompt is Grindelow's book set at the sea slash coast, of which I have two of my shelves which will fit this prompt, and which I'm not excited for either of those. So, fun. And the Muggle Studies one is book from a perspective of a muggle, so a contemporary novel, of which I have one, and I love the author that it's by, so I'm hoping I'll really like that one too. As for what books I have picked for those two prompts, keep on watching if you want to see what other books I pick up. So I'm going to close this check-in off here because I am cooking dinner at the moment and I want to actually get some reading done. First day back at work was great. The book started off pretty good. Uh, my dog doesn't hate me for leaving her at home again like normal. Happy days! Hello and welcome to Wednesday. It is day 22 of the hours 
and I have a bit of a reading update for you. So last night when I got home from work, I put my trackies on, I played with Evie for a little bit, and then we decided to chill out on the couch for a while, and I picked up this. I was home alone, well, Evie was home, but we were home alone, and I had to stop reading this because it got a bit eerie, and by a bit, I mean a lot. Like, the main character is dealing with missing objects, which she knows she put in the place they're meant to be, and no one's saying that they touch them, and the sound of footsteps while she's trying to sleep, but there's no one there, and all of that. So this did a good job of actually freaking me out last night to the point where I had to put it down, not pick it up again until it was daylight. As for progress of it, I'm about halfway through actually. I am on page 178 and we are currently home alone again, Evie and I. And am I going to freak myself out by reading this book again? Probably, because it's night time and I'm a sook and I just can't handle that sort of stuff. But I am really liking the book. It's very absorbing and I'm actually really liking the main character. She's admitting to her mistakes and her flaws and things like that. But she's also interesting. It's getting really spooky and I have a feeling that everything is going to start going down. So if you get a check-in in a bit of me being freaked out, don't be surprised. I do these things to myself, but hey, we gotta live life on the edge. Okay, so different room of the house, but same night. It's about half an hour later. The fridge just made a noise, so I'm gonna have to stop reading this for a little bit because we are at a point where the doorbell's going off in the middle of the night for no reason and there's nobody there. I can't read this book while I'm alone in the house. I just can't. But it's so good that I need to know what happens, but like... The fridge just squeaked and I looked around and nearly had a heart attack, so uh, yeah. Maybe I'll give it like 20 minutes. I'll have dinner, I'll have a little break, I'll calm down, I'll get chill, and then I'll pick it back up. That's a good plan. Page 277. What the fuck? I am now not terrified, but very, very confused. Also, I put Brooklyn Nine-Nine on the TV to help me calm my nerves a little bit because I don't watch this show and I don't like it but it's like background noise and it worked so thanks Brooklyn Nine-Nine for that and who knows maybe I'll end up liking it and watching it now but probably not because it's literally there just to add background noise so that I don't feel like someone's gonna come out and stab me from behind the curtains cool yeah page 277 I don't understand I do but I don't but I'm like did it go there? Anyway, I'm probably making no sense whatsoever if you haven't read this book, but uh, there you go. I finished the book. I'll tell y'all about it tomorrow. I hope no one murders me while I sleep. you got are you trying to get it out oh dear okay so here is my new tbr cart that evie and i are about to put together okay let's see if this works here it is this is it I got from ikea i saw someone else over on instagram had one and i asked where they got it from and this is it so i'm super excited to start using it for all of my books that i have not read I can start stacking them up like that the whole way along on all the shelves and then there won't be as much of like random book stacks and things like that. This is very exciting. Uh, also because I don't actually have any room left on my bookcase except for probably two books. So this is a good decision. Good morning. Welcome back. It is Friday today and I have some book mail. I thought I would unbox it here for you all and also at the same time tell you a little bit about what I am currently reading and also finally tell you my thoughts on The Turn of the Key. First of all, The Turn of the Key. I really enjoyed this. I'm going to give it four stars. This is about a woman who takes up a nanny position in a house that is supposedly slightly haunted slash has some history. It's also a smart house so there's that element in it too and that along with the hauntings makes it really spooky. Like you saw, 
I had to put this down a few times because it was scary, but I feel like it sort of didn't hit as hard in the spooky department as what I thought it could have. There were a few times where it pulled back where it could have kept on going, I feel like. Also, there's a few twists in this. It is a thriller, so you expect that. But the second to last twist sort of made me roll my eyes a little bit, but then it fit in with the last twist. So it ended up really, really good. And the last page, the ending, oh, that that hit hard and that hurt so overall I really did enjoy this I would pick up another book by her and it has made me want to pick up a few more thrillers but I'm still a fantasy based girl because fantasy doesn't scare me like this did and now I am reading Permanent Record by Mary H.K. Choi this is for the locomotive certificate or whatever it is the train one and one of the subjects for that is muggle studies I think which is to read a contemporary which this is in this we follow Pablo who is a college dropout with credit card debt and who's sort of struggling a little bit and he meets a celebrity pop star Liana who takes him away and on a wild ride and he's sort of trying to deal with a lot of stuff while having that aspect in his life as well. So far it's going okay. Definitely a different tone to the turn of the key. It's completely a different genre for a completely different audience and I did feel when I first picked it up that it read not teenagery but like trying to be hip but now that I'm into the voice of the character it suits it and I am liking it. The character is a little bit annoying at times. I will just leave it at that. I am on page 240 so pretty much halfway for that one. Okay now we have a box and we're gonna open it. This is my Potions Candle Co order. They're an amazing company that was based in Australia and then New Zealand and I think maybe Australia again but they are moving away from candles so this it was like the last candle sale. They're moving into illustrations so you can still find them doing cool stuff but I remember buying their candles years ago and they are some of my favourite candles ever. So I had to get some before there would be no more so sort of a sad moment but I'm just glad that I got some. Okay so it comes with a little business card right there. I'll pop their name just on the screen too here so you can follow them on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and all the all the stuff, all the social handles. Ooh, this is what it looks like. So I got Coraline, which I have had before and it is amazing. It is one of the most delicious smelling candles that I've ever had. It smells like blueberry cobbler. Ah, oh, delicious. I nearly bought two of these, but I ended up only going for the one. So I'll probably regret that later, but that's fine. Then I got this one. It is Cola Fizz. I also really love the labels. And this is also the direction that Michaela is going into. She's going into like illustrations and things like that. So that's super cool. This one, of course, smells like cola. Oh, <laughs> that is delicious. It smells exactly like the fizzy cola coke bottle lollies and then the last of the full size ones I got is Luna which is of course Harry Potter inspired this one smells like vanilla strawberry grapefruit and a hint of lemonade oh yeah that one's nice too and then I got two little minis the first one is Forbidden Forest and this one smells of birchwood grass and rain. I got this one because I just really love the eerie sort of label and anything Harry Potter. We're in a Harry Potter readathon, I just realised, is great. So at least these count sort of towards the readathon vibe. Okay. Ooh. This one's interesting. The birchwood's coming out and I love it. I don't have a lot of candles that smell like this one, so. That's a good one. And then the last one I got is hashtag am reading because when are we not reading? We are currently in a readathon. So much reading is being done. And this one smells of nutmeg, cinnamon, ginger, chai, and pumpkin. This smells like some sort of baked good with a hint of pumpkin in it. Now I just feel like baking all the cookies, so thanks. So there you go, that's my little reading update check-in as well as some candly goodness. Today I don't have much planned, I need to go do the food shop and then I think I'm going to read some more. I'm reading Permanent Record really fast because it is a contemporary, but the character is annoying me at times so I do need to be taking like breaks every now and again with it, but it's still going pretty good. So I think I'll have that one finished by 
the end of this weekend so in a few days time and then I just have the one book to go which we'll decide which one I pick when we get to that part but yeah happy Friday here's where I'm currently at playing the sims <laughs> some days you just need to build a house and manipulate people into eating all the food or exercising or just doing whatever the hell you want them to do it's a pretty sick house for these two teenagers just saying i mean they have an office and a lounge room and a kitchen their own bedrooms a sick bathroom and even a pool and some random couch just sitting on this table which uh my sim didn't want to plant but hey i don't mind it so yeah that's what i have been doing for the last hour and a bit it's just playing sims i also have smashed out some more of this I'm now on page 330, this much to go, we're going pretty good. Also, Evie is just chilling down there on her little Evie blanket. I should probably take her for a walk. I'm feeling really uninspired to edit and that's a problem. Maybe I'll procrastinate and actually finish this tonight or maybe we'll just go for a nice little walk, I don't know. Anything but edit, right? Has this been here the whole time? What is this? Alright, we're gonna leave the house. We're gonna do it. It's the same day, but I just thought I would let you know that I finished this. I ended up really liking the ending. I think that was done really well. The character was unlikable for the most of this, but I understand the reasons. I will say also that reading this gave me anxiety flutters in the old heart and that's because some of it really hit home like how do we decide who we want to be and what's the best path and just trying to adult in general and if you're failing or if you have that anxiety spike of what am I gonna do with my life like this book hit hard in that aspect and I think that's why I wasn't loving it like a hundred percent at points because it felt too close to my own headspace at times. Anyway, that got uh, really deep really fast, but basically when you have a dream and it seems unattainable, like I'm not helping myself, and this main character went through the same thing and reading that on the page, oh, it gets into you. Did I like this as much as her first book? No, I think emergency contact just hit my heart a little bit differently to this one in a more sort of positive way, but I still did enjoy this one. It's just not my favorite book that I've read for this readathon. So I'd probably end up giving it a 3.75 stars out of five. I know that's a bit of a cop out, but uh, I don't really care. So not a bad book by any means. And I'm really glad that I did read it. It's just the anxiety is real with it. But yeah, I finished this, which means I only have one book left for this readathon, and then I've completed everything that I set out to complete. So happy days. Hello, and welcome to Saturdays, the 25th day of this readathon. And as you saw in my last check in, I finished off permanent record last night, which means that I only have one book left to read and all my goals will be fulfilled. So the last book that I am intending on reading for the locomotive, which has to do with fulfilling the Defense Against the Dark Arts, I think that's the last little subject I have left to do on it, is Seafire by Natalie C. Parker. Now this book and I have a little bit of a history. This is one of those books that when I bought it, it was super hyped on Bookstagram and I loved the cover and it was about a ship full of girls who seemed very strong and piratey and it had all those elements in it that were really popular last year and the year before in YA fantasy so I thought I would buy it and then I proceeded to read the first chapter of it back then and I didn't like it it just seemed very heavy-handed and not heaps original but this readathon is going to make me give it a second chance because I was trying to pull books from my endless TBR that were already on my shelves and not go out and buy something. I had this one that would fulfill the book set on the sea or by the coast and I also had Wake by Amanda Hocking but they both sort of seem 
similar with the YA and I thought since I'd already started this one, like I was already a chapter and a half or two chapters in, may as well just power through and see how it goes. Hopefully though this one surprises me and I actually end up really enjoying it. I know that some books take a little while to warm up and I'm just hanging out that that's the case for this one. I have five days to finish it off and then this readathon is completely done. So hopefully that is doable. So here's hoping that the next five days are me checking in and telling you how much I love this book, but the reality could be something entirely different. So stay tuned and fingers crossed. have about four days left of this readathon and I am not ready. It's about 4.30, I am about to start my drive home from work, but just before I did I thought while there is still some sun in the sky, I would give you a quick reading update as well as a purchase update because I may have bought a couple of books at work today. It's a thing that is happening more often, but it's fine. So, Sea Fire, I am up to page 153 and I don't feel like reading this right now. I think that's the problem. It's not the book. The book is actually very readable. It's sort of toned it down a little bit now and it's it's a good story. Like it's going along. It's chugging along. Things are happening. But I just don't feel like YA fantasy at the moment and I think that's my problem. I think because I've been reading so much this month as well, I'm close to a burnout and I just want to be picking up things that I really, really, really want to be reading. Whereas this has been on my shelf and on my TBR for a few years now. So I think because of that, I actually decided to buy a few books. One of I've had my eye on for the last couple of days and another has been really popular and I thought I may as well give it a go. So I got The Silence of the Girls by Pat Barker. This sounds amazing and if it's anything like Madeline Miller's The Song of Achilles or Circe, I think I'm gonna love it. This is set in the same sort of time period. I'm really looking forward to it because I love, I love, love, love stories told through the women of these times and I'm so keen for it. Also, the cover, beautiful. And then I also picked up Red, White and Royal Blue by Casey McQuinston. This is everywhere at the moment. Also, I know it's a romance and I don't read a lot of romance typically. So again, this will be good for strengthening my recommendations. I don't know. I just feel like something light and easy and quick to power through. And I think this will be all of those things. So from what I've sort of seen and heard of this, this is a romance between two guys. One, I think is the son of the president of the United States. And the other one is a son of the English royalty or something like that and basically they have some hurdles to overcome I don't know it just has been doing the rounds all over booktube and bookstagram and everyone seems to be loving it so why not give it a go so that's where I am currently sitting with my reading and with my book buying also I think at the start of this little clip I said that I have four days left of this readathon I have three it's the 27th and this month only goes to the 30th so I have three days left to finish off sea fire which I think is doable but I also don't know if it is entirely because I I want to pick up something else I have other things calling my name but we'll see how we go We just got home from our walk. Let me just get to some better light. So I was feeling like I was failing a lot with this Harry Potter readathon because 
haven't really done anything Harry Potter related. Then I realised that I actually listened to the entire audiobook of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. I listened to the one with Stephen Fry as the narrator and it was really really good and nostalgic and I loved it. So yay, Harry Potter content got put in this vlog somewhere. As for my current read, it's still going slow. I think I'm nearly at the 200 page mark so I have some catching up to do but I can always finish it on Thursday because that's my next day off and I could just read and smash it out. So as of right now, I'm going to go make some dinner and then hopefully fit in an hour or so of reading and chill out before I go back to work again tomorrow. Happy reading. Well, not necessarily an issue, but like something that is nagging me when I'm reading this book. And that is that I'm finding it hard to visualize the ship. And because most of this book so far has been them on this ship, it's throwing my brain out a little bit. So to start off with, I thought maybe it's similar to a ship from like Pirates of the Caribbean. Because that's just automatically where my brain goes. That's what it knows about ships from growing up is just the representation of them in that movie. But then you read parts about how the like ship in this is solar powered and then it's also got like thrusters and some other mods on it and it just it throws me off. But now I'm thinking is it something more from Treasure Planet? Like that animated movie from back in the day that is awesome. Are the ships a cross between this and also a cross between this. I don't know, I'm confusion, but it's hard to picture. Also, earlier on, I tabbed it because I found it really weird because it sounded like a lot, but 52 girls aboard her ship. 52 people on one ship. How big is this bloody ship? And throughout the book so far, the main character's been very concerned about this because it's her responsibility and all of that, but over 50 people on the one ship. It's got to be massive, right? So that's why I'm finding it hard to visualize what this ship actually looks like and because so much of the book takes place on it, every time I read a description of it, it throws me out a little bit more. But I mean, I wouldn't be mad if it was a cross between Treasure Planet ship and Pirates of the Caribbean Black Pearl type ship. How many times have I said ship? Anyway, that's the main thing that I really have to say about this. There's action in it, and there's friendships, and there's stuff going on, but I still don't really care. I don't know. I'll just keep reading. I'll see how I go. So I'm currently watching some booktube, and Evie looks like she's planning something. I keep on looking up, and she is just staring at me. What are you planning? You could like totally have a nap right now and I wouldn't even be mad. Also, where do you get your long legs from? I'm short. I don't know. I don't know where you get these long legs from. Are you okay? <laughs> Maybe we'll do something fun tomorrow. Okay, cool. Do you ever think about how like you can feel the actual bones in your face. Like you can feel your skull in your face right at this moment, but it's just wrapped in like it's fleshy prison, like in this flesh suit. I'm touching my skull right now. So weird, that's all I got. Are you okay, baby girl? Are you sad because it looks like it's gonna rain? Okay. Oh. Morning. Guess what? It's the last day of this readathon. And as you just saw, it's rainy. It's going to be a terrible day outside. Evie is already super depressed that she can't just 
be in the sun because that's her favorite thing ever but myself I need to get some reading done and I literally can't do anything else right now because we're still trying to be not assholes in social distance it's terrible outside there is no option three that's it so I have my Harry Potter Marauders map mug I have my mischief managed shirt on because I'm just trying to feel all the vibes of this last day of this magical readathon. So I have some tea. I also have uh, some chocolate, which hopefully I don't eat this whole block today, but you know, stranger things have happened. And I have my book that I need to finish. I feel like I've been reading this one for ages at this point. I am up to page 254. Got nothing else to do today. This is gonna get read. I think I have, let's see, I think I've got, yeah, I've got like 120 pages to go. I just, I'm not feeling it. I've been saying this the whole time. It's just taking a while to get through. But yeah, I thought that we would hang out in the office together mainly because Kurt is in the other room, he is gaming at the moment, and if I'm out in the dining room, you'll be able to hear him. So we're just gonna chill in here for a hot minute and read. I don't wanna stop until I have at least 50 pages read, so let's see. Cheers. there for the moment because reading this it's reminding me of a few videos I just watched talking about YA fantasy and the YA genre in general and how it is restricting and reading this I am agreeing 100% even just in the couple of pages that I just read there's already some points where they could have gone harder they could have gone deeper they could have just done more and they're pulling back from it. It's just not doing it for me anymore. I mean, has, has Robin Hobb and has Pierce Brown and have those authors just ruined me for stuff that doesn't completely go there? I don't know. This is probably making no sense whatsoever, but I've been feeling this for a while and I think that's why I'm not really connecting with this book. Like, there is substance abuse in this. There is killing. There is all of that. But it's just like a one and done type of thing. There's people killing other people, obviously, in this, but they're not examining that to any point. I want that deep dive. I want that deep dive into just how fucked up shit can get. And this is just sort of skimming. It's skimming the surface of a lot of different important topics, but not being... Mm, not being ballsy enough to like actually get into it. And I think that's because the author is trying to be considerate of the YA audience and just holding off a little bit. Basically just go check out Daniel Green's videos on YA and his deep dive into that because that sums up what I've been feeling and I didn't know that's how I'd been feeling until someone else had put it into words. So yeah, anyway, I'm gonna go read some of this and when I come back, Hopefully I have gotten at least, you know, that far through or even finished. I don't know. Okay, so it's a little bit later on. It is quarter to 12. It's nearly lunchtime and I have got up to page 306. Also, if you can hear the dog in the background, that's my neighbor's dog being an asshole. So that, that's fun. Anyway, I am now up to page 34 that much to go it's it's chugging along it's going fine but the main reason why i wanted to come back and talk to you sooner rather than later was i got a package i'm pretty sure i know what this is i have a few books arriving for a secret tbr video which is in the works so i can't show you those yet but i'm pretty sure that this is the next book for the book club that two of my friends and i do every month so this should be safe to open mm -mm -mm. i have two amazon packages that look exactly the same and i mix them up on my tbr card so let me just see yep okay so the may pick oh eb's decided to join us the may pick for our little book club is Wicked Saints by Emily A. Duncan. I've been seeing this everywhere. It was quite popular and I didn't pick it up just because I already had so many books on my TBR. Nope. 
But now I have an excuse to try this one. I love the spine on this one too. It looks like an old book on a bookshelf. So that's cute. If you haven't heard of this one, let me just read you the blurb. It says, a girl who can speak to gods must save her people without destroying herself. A prince in danger must decide whom to trust. A boy with a monstrous secret awaits in the wings. Together, they must assassinate the king and stop the war. In a centuries long war where beauty and brutality meet their three parts and twine in a shattery world of spilled blood, mysterious saints, where a forbidden romance threatens to tip the scales between dark and light. Wicked Saints is a devastatedly gothic start to Emily A. Duncan's thrilling Something Dark and Holy trilogy. So this is going to be part of a trilogy. I think the second book's already out. So a little bit late getting to this, but that's, that's fine. And that dog just sounds like it's having a rough time. Anyway, it's time for me to make some lunch and then I will hopefully finish off this book once I have some food in me. It's looking like a three star at the moment, but we'll see what it ends up being. Howdy, welcome back. It's about 3.30 in the afternoon now. And guess what? I finished my last book for hours. So seeing as I did finish the last book for this readathon, I'm going to give you my final thoughts on that book and then we're just going to go over how I did during this readathon. So, Seafire, what did I think? I think that this is a book that was very popular in its time when this genre trope was popular of pirates and the high seas and badass female characters captaining their own ships, which is great and I really love books set like that. But I feel like I've just read this story before. This book also felt like it didn't know its world building and I don't know if that was just me reading it and not being able to visualize it but I even put a little marker in it while I was finishing off the book today where it just says steampunk vibes question mark like I don't I don't really know what this book was trying to do with the setting there's references to like the old world which I'm guessing is our world now but then they're still on this big ass ship and whenever I picture a ship, I picture something out of the Pirates of the Caribbean for some reason. It's just my default setting. So I don't know, this book just felt confused. Overall, I'm going to give it three stars, I think. I know I'm sounding super critical about it. It wasn't a bad book. I just do think that it wasn't as original as it could be. And I don't know if it was an issue with pacing because I just, I struggled to power through this one. I had to read it little bits at a time. But again, not a bad book, three stars, and it finishes off my final book for this readathon. So let's talk about that. For this readathon, I chose the Career Trader of Magical Tomes. And for this career, I had to read four books which fell under the following subjects. Ancient Runes, Charms, History of Magic, and Transfiguration. You saw me finish off this career in my last vlog. I read all those books for that one. I had Heartstopper Volume 1 for Ancient Runes, which the prompt for that subject was to read a book with a heart on the cover or in the title, Heartstopper, done. For the subject of Charms, I read Cracked Up To Be by Courtney Summers. The prompt for this subject was a white cover. For the subject of A History of Magic, I read The Lady of the Rivers by Philippa Gregory. This prompt was to read a book with witches or wizards and for transfiguration I chose Clockwork Angel by Cassandra Clare. This one had the prompt to read a book with shape-shifting in it somewhere which I didn't realize when I picked this up that that was a pretty big element of the book. So I read those to fulfill my career for Magical Shop Management. I read The Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware this was for arithmancy and the prompt was to read a book outside of the genre that you usually read I don't read a lot of thrillers, which you could probably tell from the blog because this book scared the shit out of me. And then because April was just a weird month and I had more time on my hands and I finished all of those books as well as four books for another readathon, I'll leave it linked there. I don't know how I read so much this month. I read these two books for the locomotive career. Learn to operate locomotive trains. There you go. So I needed a book for Defense Against the Dark Arts, which was to choose a book set by the coast or on the sea or whatever. And also Muggle Studies, so read a contemporary novel. And that was Permanent Record. So overall, I did a lot of reading this month. And as this was the first time that I participated 
in the hours readathon, I feel like I did a very good job. Out of the 12 subjects that there were to choose from and to fit in with the careers, I read seven of those subjects. So I feel like when Newt comes around in a few months time, I will have a pretty good basis to go off of. Having said that, Thank you so much for tuning in and for watching. I hope you did enjoy these vlogs. I hope that you've been reading something amazing as well and just escaping through that fictional door a little bit. So that's going to be it for this Owls Readathon vlog part two. I hope you have a great day out there and I will see you in my next one. Bye!